Okay, let's see if I've recovered from the flu sufficiently to do this book justice in this review. Um, I think it would be difficult to do this book justice, uh, even without um, having been ill. But, uh, oh, guys, I, I just couldn't wait to show it to you. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful things I've held between my hands. So this is a collaboration between, of course, Greg Kaminsky writing the text, um, uh, Joseph Uccello, who is the, um, uh, the, the, the typesetter and artist who brought us the Oclith books, right? Oclith Zero and uh, Oclith One, which is up on the shelf there, which I've already done a review of. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I saw this Oclith book on the same day at Watkins Books in London as I saw Aurore uh, a few years ago now. And uh, I'd say that these these two books together are really what... You, you could say that they are that that you I can thank these two books for the existence of this channel, right? I mean, this foolish fish channel, all about these beautiful occult books. Uh, this this is where it all started, and to see um, Anathema Publishing, right, and Joseph Uccello working together on the um, visual uh, aspects, on the pro the, the production acts aspects of this one is, oh, it's a dream come true. It's a dream come true. Greg Kaminsky's text is fascinating, and we'll talk about that in a moment when I show you the table of contents and talk a little bit about what's going on inside. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about masters at work here. And, um, you know, I talk a lot about um, the telismatic aspects of books. And, you know, there are a lot of um, esoteric and occult book publishing companies who who like to, well, who like to make beautiful books. And they um, very often simply rely on the quality of the um, the materials that they're using and and they put a nice design on. And and that's kind of, you know, where things end. But here, I don't know, it goes so much deeper. It goes you know the 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 amount of work that goes into Joseph Uccello's work the amount of care and attention that goes into every single one of anathema's publications is it brings something extra to the table you know it brings something uh, rather intangible and rather uh, unmissable also you know um I, I I struggle to put it into words because it's precisely that kind of area that's beyond uh, direct mundane human experience. You know, this, this, it's it's exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about um, um, uh, telismatic aspects of uh, of book publishing. Uh, let me see if there's maybe one or two more that I can show you at the at the end over here. These um, these wonderful, yeah, diagrams, of course, and um, and uh, illustrations by Joseph Uccello. So yeah, in terms of the of the production, it's 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 one of the most beautiful books that I've ever had my hands on. So yeah, there we are. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the contents. Greg Kaminsky's um, master's thesis, I believe, um, on Pico della Mirandola. So you have to be aware that it does actually read at least the first half. Right, The first half of the book reads very much like a master's thesis. It's um, uh, the, the, the preface and the uh, introduction take up a good chunk of the book. Uh, and then the... Um, uh, the the description of Pico, Pico himself um, goes on until, uh, uh, da, 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 da. when does it actually start? Um, 
Hold on, let me just find the precise... Yeah, I think this is chapter three, The Angels as Celestial Intelligences. That's where, for me, it started to pick up. So exactly halfway through the book. This, um, this first half is... Uh, I'm going to say that if ever anyone writes a biography of Pico de la Mirandola, this will be one of the main refer sources of reference. It is absolutely chock-a-block with, um, with, with, with references, right? I mean, it's, it's, I felt like it kind of assumed a little bit that the reader um, was already familiar with, with Pico's life, with, uh, or, or at least was already interested, right? It doesn't really draw you in. It is very much academic work and academic an academic approach uh, to introducing um this very uh, i'm going to say very interesting character of pico de, de la mirandola who essentially took um the jewish kabbalah and uh, put a uh, a christian spin onto it without pico de la mirandola we wouldn't have uh, what we know today as hermetic kabbalah Right, um, uh, we we wouldn't be using Kabbalah in the Western uh, magical tradition. There we are. He, he, he's you could say that he's the godfather <laughs> of uh, of um, Kabbalah in the Western magical tradition. We certainly wouldn't have any of the Golden Dawn stuff. Nothing like that. Um, uh, so so we certainly have him to thank for that. Um, yeah, quite a controversial figure, of course. He was an anti-Semite, uh, of all things, which seems uh, strange for someone who, uh, yeah, is um, uh, at, at the core, at the yeah, at the origins of uh, of um, um, bringing this Jewish mysticism uh, to the, the to, to the Western tradition. Um, uh, Nevertheless, you know, uh, as as you know from from the videos that I've made in the past, um, I'm much more interested in the thoughts themselves than in the people, which is why about halfway through we start getting into the thoughts, and this really is where I started to get very interested. Um, uh, from yeah, from chapter three all the way to the end, uh, the tone becomes much less academic, and maybe it's because I I was more interested. I, I don't know, uh, but suddenly uh, yeah, it's it's just fascinating stuff. So what do we get? We get angels as celestial intelligences, uh, divine hierarchy, the question of angelic materiality. Very important question, right? Really, really interesting question. So seeing all of this from Pico de la Mirandola's point of view. And then we get chapter four, the angelic order of the cherubim or the cherubim, um, uh, which Pico de la Mirandola had some controversial opinions about, you know, where in the hierarchy they actually belong. And then the emulation of angels, right? So how a human being can emulate an angel to actually um, take an angel's place and uh, while alive, by the way. Uh, and he gives some uh, descriptions on how to do that a little bit later in the chapter on Jacob's Ladder. Fantastic, very, very interesting stuff. Uh, then you have mystical approaches to union with the divine, uh, natural magic. I mean, you can see here that this is very, very much uh, um, what you might call right-hand path stuff. Um, it's uh, a very Judeo-Christian oriented stuff um, uh, and uh, f fascinating to me. Uh, then we have chapter, let me see, chapter five, mystical. Uh, yet yeah, we've done that. <laughs> chapter six, uh, the continuum of wisdom and tradition. Then we've got chapter seven. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. So talking about uh, his his. Uh, his teachers and uh, talking about what uh, what his thoughts are and so on and so forth. Uh, Metatron and Azazel, um, uh, so talking about uh, the way Enoch became Metatron, and uh, so the, the the whole focus for Pico was how a person might emulate the mind of an angel um, in order to. Uh, advance on their spiritual path, 
right, and uh, ultimately achieve union with uh, uh, with divinity. So yeah, <laughs> that may or may not be your your cup of tea. I found it fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And then the whole chapter on Jacob's ladder is terrific, very very interesting approach to a, a practical use of the story of Jacob's ladder. Very very nice. So so yeah, in terms of the contents, it's it's great. In terms of the production it's great it's yeah it's one of the great books that has uh, that have been uh, published this year um uh, uh, very very high to the top if not at the top of um of the um uh, list of of most beautiful and 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 most interesting books that i've seen this year there we are fantastic fantastic work all around beautiful Right. There we are, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching the review. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. And I will see you very soon with another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.